So let's come to the U.S. Uh, I would like, to, if you could, to take a U.S. state. Let's take California as an example. It has coastline, has the Central Valley, has the big Sierra mountain range, and uh, certainly highly diverse weather from one of those uh, regions to the others. In California, and in fact for the rest of the world too, they seem to have a disdain for mountains. They disappeared from the database in recent years. Uh, California uh, went back to four stations all on the coast, one near San Francisco and three near Los Angeles in the, in the uh, uh, GHCN database. Now, in the last year, they uh, returned uh, the U.S. climate network to GHCN, in a sense doubling the, uh, the number of stations globally, with 1,200 stations in the, uh, in the U.S. network, but uh, uh, in recent years, it, just those four stations. Well, let me, let me clear this up now. Uh, we had 9,000 or 6,000 stations. We went down to 1,000. Does that mean those other weather observation stations were shut down, disappeared, or did they just stop using the data in their calculations? They stopped using the data. Mo uh, the Moscow uh, uh, Institute for Economic Analysis told us that the other stations were available and just not being accessed. We hear the same thing from Canada, uh, from South America. Uh, where Bolivia, the, the mountains, uh, uh, the Andy Mountain stations are all are gone, and uh, although the data uh, points are, are still appear in their analysis, uh, they're estimated using coastal cities, which are very different from high, high mountain uh, uh, city locations. Well, it sounds as though stations remaining are largely around cities. And isn't that a highly significant factor? Absolutely. Urbanization is a very significant factor. Uh, the major databases of NOAA and the uh, Hadley Center do not make any adjustment for urbanization, even though they now uh, not defrocked but uh, idle temporarily during the investigation. Phil Jones was part of a, an effort that looked at urbanization in China and found that it uh, produced a contamination of 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit since 1900. Well now one other thing here. Uh, are we comparing this data from this thousand stations with the data from the 6,000, or did they go back and recalculate all the old data? No, unfortunately, what, what they've done uh, is they, they did their average based on the, uh, the old network, which with all its cold stations, and they're, they're, they're taking only the current data and comparing that to the averages from, from before and uh, ensuring that you're gonna find warming. Joe, this is the United States government. How yes. can they do this? <laughs> we ask ourselves that question every day. How, how can they do this? How can the Hadley Center do this? How can the NASA uh, uh, Center uh, allow this to happen? Uh, follow the money, I guess, is the answer. Well, it's an, am it's an amazing revelation. Uh, is it a big surprise to you? No, we, we uh, knew from uh, our work with uh, U.S. data, which at one time was the, the most accurate data set, that uh, data was cyclical and there was no remarkable long-term trend in, 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 uh, in warming. Uh, but they even uh, tampered with that data by removing the urban adjustment that made it such a good data set before so and allowing it, the are you sites... Saying, are you saying to us that if we hear a pronouncement from the National Data Climate Center, from the National Weather Service, from NOAA, all part of our United States federal government, that 2009 was, let's say, the fifth warmest year in history or something of that sort, that it is based on manipulated data? Absolutely. Now, it, Joe, uh, is there anything else that they're doing other than just cutting the number of stations? Well, they're, ad they're doing adjustments to, to the data. Uh, there's loss of, uh, uh, in addition to stations, there's a lot of missing months, a tenfold increase in the number of missing months, which allows for other mischief by having to estimate the temperature from surrounding locations, which but may vary month to month. They, and your uh, report, which I have read, and which we will have a link posted to, indicates that they're actually taking averages and creating a, a computer grid so when they do these big pronouncements, there are no actual temperatures involved, only uh, averages. They complete, uh, they produce a grid for the, uh, the Earth, which is flattened, and they estimate a number for each of the grid 
boxes and a lot of those grid boxes are now vacant so they have to estimate the temperatures and they're doing that based on temperatures elsewhere give us an example an example in northern russia the grid box may be empty uh... they'll look south to find the nearest uh... uh two locations and use that average as a, as an estimate for that grid box and it very likely is going to be warmer than than um, than the a, uh, the long term average when there used to be data there. So you're uh, the telling us there's no there's absolutely no actual averaging of world temperatures to create the world temperature report. It it's a uh, mishmash of uh, of uh, real data and uh, created data. What are you going to do about this? We, we're trying to get the attention of uh, people who, who count and, uh, and investigate them. Right now, uh, Ground Zero has been the Hadley Center in the UK. We think NOAA is complicit, if not uh, uh, maybe the, uh, the real Ground Zero for the, the issue. We have been very pleased to have the opportunity to present this data for the first time on this program tonight. And we do have the links to your detailed report it ought to make big news, Joe. Well, we, it, it needs attention and uh, it needs focus. We need to, to get at the, the truth. If we're going to make important decisions about our future. Joe DeLeo, ladies and gentlemen, a fellow of the American Meteorological Society, a certified consulting meteorologist, and by the way, a very good friend of mine.